This lecture is a continuation on the series of the nervous system, and this lecture is going to cover the basic structures of a neuron. So when we start with a neuron, we are going to start with its cell body, which we call the soma or the neurosoma. The cell body is going to contain the majority of our organelles, including our nucleus, generally that has a very large nucleolus. So our soma, or our cell body, is going to be this roundish structure here. The cytoplasm of our soma has a special name because we're talking about a special kind of cell. We call the cytoplasm of the soma the perikaryon. The prefix peri means around and carry is in reference to the nucleus. So this is the cytoplasm of our soma. So our perikaryon is going to contain our mitochondria, our lysosomes, Golgi complex, numerous inclusions, and extensive endoplasmic reticulum. And while we're talking about endoplasmic reticulum and ribosomes, we can point out nesyl bodies. Nesyl bodies are dense collections of rough ER and ribosomes that are in charge of carrying out much of our protein synthesis in our neurons. So we see nasal bodies up here listed, and what we're talking about are these little collections of rough ER and ribosomes surrounding our nucleus. And these stain dark enough that they actually are going to stick out when you look at a slide. Before we leave this slide, I want to point out our axon hillock. Our axon hillock is the area where our cell body meets our axon. And this is going to be very important to the production of action potentials, which we won't talk about until we hit physiology. So now we are going to take a closer look at the processes that are connected to our soma. We have two sets of processes. We have dendrites and we have axons. Our dendrite is going to be the site where we receive signals from sensory receptors and other neurons. Our dendrites can take many different forms, but in our classic neuron, which we have depicted here. Our dendrites are usually depicted as these little branches that are attached to our cell body. And the word dendrite actually means branch. Our axons, on the other hand, are going to carry action potentials away from the soma. So our axon is going to get an action potential that starts in that axon hillock and it carries that action potential down to stimulate other cells. Now generally our axon is relatively unbranched, but sometimes we see what are called axon collaterals. Axon collaterals are parallel branches of an axon that allow one neuron to stimulate multiple other cells at the same time. The co part in collaterals means alongside. So if you have a co-worker, it is someone you work alongside. And then laterals also means along the side. So literally we have branches that are alongside one another in our axons that allow an action potential to start in our axon hillock and then be carried down many different branches at the same time so that we can stimulate many cells at once. Continuing on the topics of axons, we have a few more 
vocabulary words to deal with. We have axoplasm, which you can break down into axo, which is axon, and then plasm, which is generally going to be the cytoplasm, and so that's going to be our cytoplasm inside an axon. Then we have our axolema. Our axolema is, again, we're going to have axo for axon, and lema is in reference to the plasma membrane. So an axolema is just the cell membrane of our axon. And these two together have some special characteristics that allow our axon to carry those electrical signals through the membrane. And this is the physiology of our axon that allows an action potential or an electrical signal to be conducted down the axon. Lastly, as our action potential is going to reach the end of the axon, many of our neurons have telodendria. If we break down this word, Telo means end, like telophase is the last phase of mitosis, or a telephone, you're talking to a person on the end of a line. And then dendria, like our dendrites, is going to mean branches. So telodendria are sometimes called terminal arborization, which literally means the same thing end branches. So it's the terminal branching of an axon to allow for many synapses with one postsynaptic cell. This is going to increase the likelihood of producing an effect at the postsynaptic cell because just like our axon collaterals, which we see here in these branches in black, we are also going to see that action potential go down each of our telodendria all at the same time to arrive at our target cell and produce a large signal to create a response in our target cell. And this brings us to what we see at the very end of our axon, which is a synaptic knob. These go by different names depending on exactly what we're synapsing to, but generally you can use the term synaptic knob synonymous with synaptic button, terminal button, and there are a few others. So what we mean is this slight swelling that forms a junction with the next cell. So here we see we've got many terminal buttons at the end of our telodendria. And if we zoom in on one of those terminal buttons, we see the axon swells out a little bit. And here's our action potential coming down. That action potential causes the release of neurotransmitters from our presynaptic neuron and then those neurotransmitters bind onto our postsynaptic neuron. So let's talk about that vocabulary a little bit. A presynaptic neuron is the neuron before the synapse. So the synapse is the entire structure of communication between two neurons. So our synapse is going to include our synaptic knob and the membrane of our postsynaptic cell. So anything before the synapse, that's our presynaptic neuron. Anything after the synapse, that is our postsynaptic neuron. So our presynaptic cell is going to send our signals and our postsynaptic cell is going to receive those signals. So if we erase all of those scribbles I drew, 
we can see this vocabulary at work. Our presynaptic neuron sends an action potential down the axon to our synaptic knob. This is our presynaptic membrane. That action potential causes neurotransmitters to be released into the synaptic cleft. The synaptic cleft or synaptic gap is the space between the presynaptic membrane and the postsynaptic membrane. These neurotransmitters are then going to bind onto receptors on our postsynaptic membrane and stimulate this postsynaptic cell to do something. This concludes our discussion on the structures of neurons and if you have any questions please do not hesitate to contact your instructor.